This is another episode on the basic Azure architecture series. In this uh, episode, I'm going to discuss the design principles. Uh, in case if you have missed any of the videos prior to this, uh, you can track through the portal. Uh, you can log into the iCode for you website where you can see um, basic Azure architecture. And I'm keeping this information up to date. If you missed any of these, uh, you can look at uh, the prior videos. So in the design principles, I'm going to talk about some of the Azure patterns and uh, we'll also discuss some of the you know, project management related, uh, why the, uh, the patterns are so important. So based on my experience on different projects over the period of time in the Microsoft Azure and Microsoft uh, .NET Core projects, so the people are following different patterns for moving into the Azure. One is lift and shift existing workloads into the virtual machines. This is completely um, kind of controlling uh, infrastructure team is controlling these patterns. And the second one, um, some of the legacy uh, platforming legacy .NET applications to either Windows container or the Azure uh, Linux container in the Azure Kubernetes services. So that's the second pattern I'm seeing. Uh, people are doing the uh, migrations. And the third one is the cloud first applications using the PaaS services or uh, Microsoft architecture. So I just wanted to let you know that the basic architecture I'm working on here is for pretty much for the kind of a startups and mid-level companies. So uh, I think I'm following the cloud first application approach PaaS services. Uh, using the microservices architectural pattern in the episode I'm following. So I have a separate, I'm going to have a separate videos on the Azure Kubernetes services also, uh, but for now I will be focusing on cloud first applications using the PaaS. So you will always think of the, uh, what actually drives these patterns, like, you know, your security, governance, availability, performance. So these are the, some of the non-functional requirements you should be absolutely clear before jumping into any of the patterns uh, you start looking at. So I would also talk about the project life cycle, uh, you know, before digging into the basic Azure architectural patterns. So the top level ones are input to the uh, project life cycle. So in a project life cycle, you will see the requirement based design, implementation, test and go live. So in the business requirement, business case, you need to have the strong business case why I'm doing this. So I'm creating a portal called iCode for you website and that website need the cloud infrastructure in secure, scalable and uh, high performance and high availability requirements. So those are my uh, application uh, use case. So you basically decide what cloud strategy, uh, the cloud pattern or cloud strategy I was talking about, whether you want to use the Kubernetes architecture or you want to use the lift and shift architecture or the cloud first uh, pass uh, architecture. So that's the cloud strategy. So as I mentioned, I've selected the cloud first applications using the pass services, microservices uh, 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 cloud strategy for this uh, case study. And what it comes out is the, you know, the Azure uh, cost modeling. So uh, what, how much does it cost if you select this, uh, the cloud strategy? So the inputs from the next phase is the Azure uh, mobilization where you should have the proper plan for your architecture. So that is something you will be seeing throughout this basic Azure architecture. The next one is the design phase. For the design phase, the inputs are going to be the non-functional requirements, non-proof of concept and the design workshops. Let's talk about the non-functional requirements. So these are the uh, some of the uh, important uh, factors. Uh, inputs uh, uh, actually drives the, the design you are going to work on, like your security, uh, your uh, the availability, performance. These are all comes under the non-functional requirements. The second one is the proof of concepts. Make sure that any design you produce, you are comfortable with those technologies. If you are um, just talking about those technologies, it doesn't know how it works and you are putting the design in place and later you are going to refactor the design in case if that 
uh, service is not working. So making sure that you know you have the proof of concept. So that's where I'm trying to help here in, uh, in these videos. At least my aim is to show the prototype or the proof of concept that how the basic Azure architecture look like for the mid size mid size uh, you know company uh, websites. So the outcome from the design is going to be the high level um, uh, application overview and high level design and the low level design. And these documents will feed into the actual implementation where you actually start writing your RM templates or Terraform or the Azure DevOps CI CDs. So I will also go through the these documents. I've uh, discussed about the uh, application overview, the actual, I will be discussing about the application overview, which is which kind of contains the actual Azure blueprint. So in the next video, I'm going to focus on that. And then also discuss about the high level design and uh, low level document details. And now um, the next phase is in the build. In the build phase, you need to know what kind of um, naming conventions I should be following uh, when I'm creating the Azure resources. That's very important. So I've created a separate document on the Azure naming convention. So I will be showing that in the subsequent videos and also IP address schema. So this is the complete, you know, when you are actually building the foundation, like the uh, Azure infrastructure. So you need to understand the, how the IP address schema looks like. Otherwise, you know, it is um, really difficult making those changes later part of the project. So it's very important to take right decisions at the beginning of the project uh, during the design um, actual uh, before implementation. The outcome from the build is going to be your CI CD pipelines and the actual RM templates or Terraform code infrastructure as a code. That's that's uh, I call it as infrastructure as a code. And the later, you know, the operational acceptance criteria in the test phase and go live and generate the run book. So this is the typical project life cycle uh, we should be following when you are actually considering the Azure uh, designs. Now let's talk about the, some of the success factors, right? Like based on my experience so far, the success comes with proper design, having the proper proof of concepts and you know following in the agile approach rather than a big bang and having the proper collaboration with the different team members. So in the requirement space, you will have the functional requirements, you will have the non-functional requirements. So we'll be pretty much focusing on here, the Azure, uh, which is kind of the NFRs, non-functional requirements. Um, so one, you need to question to yourself, are you building the single region or the multiple region uh, data centers? Are there any compliance requirements for your website? So in my case, I'm building the application, the prototype I'm building is for um, supports for the multi-region, it is scalable. And yes, the it should also have the compliance requirement, PCI and uh, DSS uh, requirements or GDPR requirements. How many concurrent users uh, are going to access your system? So based on these non-functional requirements, some of the non-functional requirements, you will be able to take the right uh, decision. So for example, in my application, I'm considering 200 to 500 users um, throughput for my application uh, concurrent users. As I mentioned, the proof of concepts, keep things in hand uh, before you start designing, before you start the implementation. For example, if I don't know, uh, you know how the Cosmos DBs work, but I just listed in the Cosmos DB non-production, non uh, non um, no SQL database, then uh, I should know how the Cosmos DB works. Uh, does it scalable? Things like that I have to consider. The next one for the you know the project success is the agile approach. Don't go in a big bank. For example, when you are creating the resource groups, think through twice um, whether I should be creating the resource group for the project specific, whether I will be resource group for one big uh, thing. So depending on that, your RBAC is going to have the impact. So take the right decision, make it smaller, take uh, uh, early decisions. 
and also when you are working on the high level design document low level design document it's always recommended also start with your uh, terraform or your uh, ci cd pipelines in the azure devops to make sure that you know you are comfortable not actually uh, waiting until the complete uh, hld or lld is completed and also these are kind of the agile practices i'm talking about like also avoid problems of actually get uh, gets implemented is different than what is designed. So make sure that the what you design, what you implement, that is what uh, should be targeted. And good collaboration is always adds the success to the project. Make sure that architects meet with the project managers, stakeholders of the projects, um, including the security and the operational teams throughout the uh, project life cycle. Now let's talk about the Azure design considerations. So when you are actually doing the design, you should ask questions to yourself. Is it a greenfield application? Are the existing application migrating into the Azure? Are we deploying into the organization's existing subscriptions? You have to create a new subscription. So you should clear what uh, you will be doing. In my case, I have already prepared the Azure subscriptions. So I'm uh, working on the greenfield application, for example. So accordingly, I know what needs to be done to make it a successful project. So next one is what are the applications uh, going to be deployed into the Azure? I know I have a website which is built in React and the Blazor. I have a backend uh, microservices going to be deployed into. So I, uh, you know, I have planned it well before actually start the uh, actual Azure implementation. So you can ask yourself whether it is a monolithic architecture or the microservices architecture, are you following the, uh, the pass um, cloud strategy or lift and shift cloud strategy or Kubernetes one. So in this case, as I mentioned, I'm using the microservices architecture with the, um, the pass model. And I, I'm also clear, super clear on the regulatory and the GDPR requirements for the architecture. The next one is the Azure core infrastructure. So you need to know whether do you need the management groups, subscriptions, how many subscriptions do you need? How do you want to manage the identity? So all these, uh, you know, uh, the core infrastructure components I'm going to talk throughout the series uh, I'm working on as part of the uh, basic Azure architecture. Do I have any uh, on-premise connectivity? In my case, no, I don't have any on-premise connectivity. In that case, I don't need to deal with the express route VPN, but in your mid-level architecture, mid-level companies uh, pretty much using migrating from the on-premise to the Azure in that case, consider using the express routes and VPN. So I can talk about a little bit on the express route VPN uh, later part of the course. And then uh, you can talk about the security component services required. In this case, I'm using the Azure application gateway and the firewalls. What kind of logging system are we using? Are you integrating with any existing uh, tools, uh, which are, uh, you know, for example, uh, send, uh, for example, application insights or Dynatrace or the Splunks, etc. Are you, what kind of uh, security or governance uh, rules like Azure Sentinel, Security Center, Azure, um advisor and how you're setting up your rbac policies these are all things will be discussed in the security and governance third party services for example in my case i'm using the send grid as the uh, service for sending the emails infrastructure configuration and deployments i'm using the azure devops um in case if you are using the terraform or rm templates or the git labs so we should be clear on what exactly needs to be used. So in this case, I'm using the Azure DevOps with the RM templates. Now let's talk about the application hosting. So these are the uh, key areas to consider when you think of hosting uh, your application. So is your is this application be migrated from on-premise? In my application, that's the greenfield application. So it's not the migration. <clears throat> and I'm following the Microservices architecture, I already have the um, own personal subscription. 
uh, whether you are using the organization subscription or shared subscription so you need to uh, keep that subscription handy and authentication if there are any authentication mechanisms you are using multi-factor authentication for example are you do you need the b2c or uh, bc or b2c or b2b technologies will the application be public facing so for example the application i'm working on the prototype is the public facing uh, website for example what industry regulations need to be followed for example i need to follow the pci tss and also gdpr requirements <clears throat> and regional are the data redundancy requirements you can think of uh, what performance level expected for your application uh, availability is are you looking for 24 by 7 availability or are you okay for compromising on the sla those are the kind of things um, need to keep in hand when you are actually starting the application hosting uh, what azure services does your application requires is it sas or pa pass in my case i'm completely going with the pass architecture do you need any third party? Yes, I, I will be using the SendGrid. I will be using the SPNet core identity, so on. So the databases, yes, I will be using the SQL server, Cosmos DBs. I'm not using the Postgres SQL, for example. So um, list out what the database requirements are. Uh, are there any data warehouse archival uh, requirements? In my case, I'm not using any database, uh, data warehouse uh, archivals. Uh, also think of monitoring alerting and the uh, vnet network security uh, groups as part of the network uh, security and also think of what are the backup plans disaster recovery plans uh, taken care part of this application and the last slide in this video uh, choosing an azure uh, services uh, these are the requirements actually drives what service is required what service can be avoided so does it meet your project requirements if it doesn't meet project requirements then you know you need to think of uh, the service considerations and also when you are selecting any of these services make sure that you are familiarized with those uh, services and is it scalable for the future purpose so today i am uh, really small but in the future i might grow so in that case is my architectural uh, scalable enough for the future purpose resilience and availability so what is the sla we are looking for uh, the application um, is the cost acceptable so like you know depending on so i can spend um, you know 3 300k per month or like you need to understand what is your cost acceptable cost so depending on that you can compromise some of these services and the limitations what are the limitations of the service have when you are actually selecting any of those services so you have to keep these uh, um, non-functional things in hand while selecting any of the services so these are the some of the um you know the references uh, you can look into this uh, when you are actually working on the basic as your architecture.